Lecture 1 out of 4, Sediments in Depth, Lithogenous Sediments. So here's a lovely picture of some lithogenous sediments. Remember, these ones are uh, from rocks, litho meaning rock. So these are broken down, eroded piece of rocks that are just crushed up and thrown into the ocean, all crushified like. Another name for them are pterogenous because they've been made from uh, weathering and erosion. And remember, weathering is the crushing and erosion is the moving. Uh, most of them are found in the margins. Uh, there's 22 billion tons of sediment every single year that gets put into the continental margins. Uh, in addition to that, 80% of Asia's goes right down a trench. So if you have an active conversion margin, you're not going to see a whole lot of that. I uh, remember it's constantly being moved and sorted, and the finer the sediment is, the farther it can be moved. So here's a nice picture that just sort of demonstrates of where in the world you find different sediments. You'll notice that you see a lot of the word clay and a lot of the word ooze, which is one of my favorites. And then over here you have little pockets of hydrogenous sediment that we don't really care about for this lecture. Glacial and marine sediment, those are really fun because that's going to be a mixture of different uh, glacial frozen pieces from the land mixed in with different marine pieces from the water, which is really kind of cool. It's worth noting now that ooze is a technical term. Uh, think of like mud when it gets really like slushy and gooky. Uh, think of like a slurry, but it's made out of dirt. So it feels like ooze, but what it really is is microscopic pieces of sediment mixed in with water. And so when you have that mixture, it makes uh, really like a like a like a fruit smoothie consistency. Only you know dirt and stuff. Just gross. Clay, on the other hand, are even smaller. So here's a nice picture that just demonstrates that if you've got uh, sediment that's coming from the land and is starting over here on the land, it will be carried uh, different amounts, mostly by the wind. You can see that some of it will also be carried by turbidity currents taken right here off the shelf. There's a shelf with the genus sediments because they come from the continental shelf. And we'll make this turbidity current depositional fans down here. You also have different regions of pelagic clays, etc., etc. We're going to talk about these a little bit more in depth in a minute. For the most part, you're going to have uh, quartzy stuff. Now, it's going to be rarer to find because it's been uh, weathered for so long. And so it starts as quartz, but it's rare to find because for the most part it's turning into uh, other clay-like sediments. You'll find a lot of sand and gravel, which is worth a fair amount of money because with sand and gravel deposits, you often find gold, which is very important for, you know, Gold! And you also find diamonds, which is a big deal. Now we're, we're talking about, about this one already, so we'll just hit it very, very quickly. Remember, as the maturity of the sediment increases, as the sediment gets older, it will become more sorted, more clay-like, more rounded. And that obviously happens as time increases because that's the definition of getting older and more mature. So keep in mind that uh, these sediments over here are on this side of the screen, these are the earlier ones that are better sorted. These ones over here are being more angular, they're really not so sorted, so you've got big ones mixed in with little bits of microscopic things that you can't even see. Those would be an example of not well sorted. So here's a nice table for your rubber table 4.2. It gives you the sizes. These are the acceptable names for the sizes, range big to small. You'll notice that they are in millimeters, which is really fun. So you'll notice that a boulder is anything bigger than 256 millimeters, which is 25 and a half centimeters. So you know, boulders are like, that's a boulder. When we're talking about sediments. It goes all the way down to the clay, which are 1 4096 of a millimeter. So these, uh, these ones down here, the sand are pretty small, silk and clay are going to be microscopic. You will not be able to see those grain sizes with your eye. When you look at clay, you see like just a big lump of rock, but a geologist will actually see several different components. It's also worth noting that the larger the particle is, the more energy it's going to take to carry it. The smaller the particle is, the less energy it's going to take to carry it. Because the majority of marine sediments fall into this size range, they can be carried for a very long time because there's a lot of energy. So you can think about it the other way too. If you have a lot of energy, that means you can carry these smaller sediments much, 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 much 
farther. Because you're pretty sure you have some sentiment in about when this actual, uh, well, this, this is satellite imagery, and then they drew some kind of time because this is coming, coming, coming off of Africa, just dust. dust. There it goes. I'm in the ocean. You know, here's, here's the mainland. Here's the dust cloud. It's still in the air, so probably you can keep going. You know, I have the tendency to keep going once it's in the water. So you can find out that the sediment is all over the place. Now, before we get too much farther, we need to talk about the rhythmic versus pelagic. Keep in mind, again, that you do find small bits everywhere. Anything that's an aridic, that's shallow water, that's technically a coastal region inside your continental margin, that would be the aridic zone. Pelagic regions, that is deep under the ocean's floor, that's in our deep ocean basin. So anything that we talk about being pelagic, those are found in the deep ocean basin. Anything that we talk about being neuritic, not neurotic, but neuritic, that is in the continental margin. So let's talk about neuritic sediments. Again, the water's going to be shallow, the water's going to be uh, warmer, and you're going to be more likely to find lithogenous sediments, things that are deposited very quickly. Larger pieces are more likely to be found in your neuritic zone because, remember, it's not very far out. So these are the things that would need a lot more energy to carry them. You tend to find beach deposits, anything up on the land. Things that are found in the continental shelf are actually called relict sediments, which is fun. Think of like relics of the past. And then you also find our delicious and wonderful turbidite deposits. Those are also an example of an aridic sediment because they're deposited from the slope to the rise. Glacial sediments are very commonly neuritic because, you know, the glaciers are big and don't tend to go very, very far. I'm not talking about the ice itself. I'm talking about all the dirt and gook and grime that the glacier is, you know, taken with it. It's worth noting that our relic deposits, those are in the ballpark of three to 7,000 years old. So those deposits, deposits from three to 7,000 years ago. Let's talk pelagic. These ones are deep. They usually tend to be very fine because, again, uh, they've traveled a far distance, so you know they didn't take that much energy to keep pushing them. As a result of their fine size, they take a long while to settle through the ocean. Remember, salt water is relatively dense, so it's going to take a little while for these things to get through, even though that they are relatively dense compared to normal water. It'll take them longer to settle to the bottom, plus you have currents and like things swimming in ships and marine creatures like mermaids swimming around in there. So they take a little while to get down to the bottom. Some examples of pelagic sediments are your abyssal clay. Uh, they tend to be very rusty in color because they've got a lot of iron oxide, which is rust, by the way. The only type that we ever have that we call it our abyssal clays. That's, that's it. That's all you really find there. So here are some of the key players that are going to be uh, carrying these are the erosional elements carrying the sediments for us. You've got stuff coming out of volcanoes, stuff that's blown by the wind, and stuff that's carried by deep ocean currents. Volcanoes are a very interesting one because it gives us a good idea of different natural disasters, etc. So you can see here again, now that we've talked about those things, I want you to just ponder on the map and then you can see. So we've got, you know, here's America, here's Eurasia over here. So Europe's sticking off so right over here where you can see there's Africa, but you can actually see uh, there's big zones where you find uh, different lithogen sediments just throughout the ocean, uh, which is really kind of cool. Keep in mind, all these sediments, the lithogenous ones, all started on the land, usually mainland big continents, and they go out in the ocean for a pretty good amount of space. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the forum, but that's it for lithogenous sediments.